my friends from hemp engineering, from all over the world, advocates and um, supporters of this cause. I have the great pleasure to interview today Danica Donseith. She's based in Toronto, Canada, and she's going to be talking to us of her marvelous jobs and projects that she's executing right now in, in that country. Welcome, Danica. How are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so well, and thank you so much for having me. I think that we definitely have to edit some of that out of the first, but uh, I'm doing really Actually, we're in Canada, Ontario. Right now, our main farm is based out of Stratford. So we are really excited about the grow season coming. Thank okay. you for having us. No, it's a great pleasure, my friend. You know, last time we saw each other, last time we hugged each other was in Nepal. <laughs> with monkeys, with monkeys around yeah. us. I remember that. <laughs> yes. Danica. And I, I actually asked you, I said, oh my gosh, Raymond, is this normal? And you said, oh, yes. <laughs> Danica, tell us about yourself. How did you end up in the hemp business? Oh, th thank you for asking. So my background is public relations and communications um, here in Canada. I actually had the beautiful opportunity of working for a startup company for um, focused on CBD. Once I started learning more about that, I became obsessed with hemp. My grandmother and I, hi, Nana, she and I actually converted um, our 100 acres to a hemp farm. And with that, we started traveling. I mainly did the traveling, as you remember. And just realizing what was going on with hemp, what that plant meant. And I, I became obsessed with it in a very good way starting to realize about CBD and about derivatives and all of that. So since then, Canada Collective actually has a really amazing business partner, Magic Hill, also based in Ontario. They primarily were uh, Christmas trees of pine trees. They are now looking into the next couple of years converting. So we are very grateful and love working with them. A few other pro properties have come on, but to your point, further than that, we're now we're looking at global integration. We are now looking at what this plant means for us um, to kind of undo the damage that we have done to make moves and work together with different continents, which is why I am so grateful to be on your show all the way. And I want to see like it's so sunny there. Yes, I'm jealous. Yeah, it's very sunny. Yes, yes. I'll show yeah. you after the interview. The, the, the yes, and, and, but, and that's the point, though, is that we're all working with different um, time zones and different genetics and all of that. So that is where I fell in love with the plant. And I fell in love with what? Canna Collective. And that's why I founded Canna Collective. So. Which is good, which is good. And, and that gives um, it's a light within the, within the, the, the prohibition. Tell us about your experience with your with the prohibition, my friend. Have you had any particular? Yes. Yeah, so, and it, it's interesting that you asked that. I and to I feel for the typical person who wasn't familiar with cannabis and what that looked like. Prohibition meant kind of the roaring twenties, and there was a culture to that. Not really realizing that that actually extended into the agricultural sector. Because, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was in early 1900s, it was actually mandatory for each farmer to grow a minimum of one acre of hemp. Okay. Because it built into the natural cannabinoid system of the animals and that built into the cannabinoid system in humans. So before we even kind of knew what that meant, there was a mandate for that. With prohibition happening and, you know, cannabis being confused with hemp and marijuana or CBD and all, all of that, you know, kind of broad, broad topic. I think when in 2018, when Canada decided and thank goodness that that was no longer under um, the Drug Act, and I'm not pronouncing that correctly, and I know that there are people that would know that far better than I 
But when that happened, it opened a floodgate. So people were confused from, you know, the overall um, umbrella of cannabis versus marijuana versus CBD versus hemp and what that meant. So for the last three years, a lot of people I feel after prohibition are kind of now trying to keep up with it and trying to understand what that means for next steps. I agree with you. I agree with you. It's an issue that they have to be resolved very soon if we want to get the industry up and running. Uh, there is, uh, there are still a lot of obstacles that need to be overcome, especially in the elite and the de decision makers of each country. I agree with you, Danica. So let's come to the most exciting part of the interview. Tell us about your projects. I'm aware that you have a portfolio of ideas and you want to do Thank a lot you. of things. Uh, please enlighten us, yes. Yeah, and, and thank you so much for giving me the platform. As I mentioned, um, Magic Hill is a partner with us and they are actually implementing right now um, events. So they have been doing um, farm to table and agriculture and very focused on that. They're now going to take that and we're seeing a lot of, a lot of more sustainable ideas. That includes weddings and that includes events. Wow. Think about how many items, how many things are thrown away after an event or are not properly composted because it's it's bioplastic. It's and it's it's very beautiful for the event. But what if we could make that all sustainable? And we could make that hemp-based and we have hemp bouquets and hemp weddings. So that is Magic Hill is focusing on. That's a project that I know is public, so we're okay to say that. There are a couple other things embargoed that we're very excited about, but events are definitely going to be coming down and allowing people to, um, you, like I said, use those sustainable items. In addition to that, I can't speak too, too much to it, but it is something that's unprecedented in Canada mm -hmm. that has formally been illegal that hemp is now going to be implemented in um, um, government and municipality way. Oh, this is good. So we're, we're seeing it on a larger scale, to my point, right? We're seeing events and we're seeing it with um, textiles and how I think people are more aware of their ecological footprint. But now we're seeing it come into every sector where it can be um, financially beneficial, but mainly beneficial for the environment. So people that, I, I would say two years ago, that had no interest in my project or my outside on yeah. hand are circling and saying, well, tell me more. And I, and I, no love, I love that. And I will sit down with anybody. But there, yes, there is a plethora of um, projects and initiatives going on right now in Canada that are meeting different criteria and quite frankly, creating job space, right? We're in a pandemic. There are, and not to segue from that, but too, there are a lot of people that are, have worked, you know, 30 years in whichever industry and now don't have a job. Yeah. So I think cannabis as a whole is creating a whole different job space of people to be able to use their skills and implement them. And in the same, like I said, in the same breath, really putting back into our earth so that we can continue this. Um, having said that, I believe that you have a strong um, advocacy for self-sustainability and circular economy. Do you truly believe that somehow cannabis will help us to create a new era for the whole world? Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, to, re to absolutely reiterate and repeat what I just said, but at the same point, I think it's, it's opening a lot of economical global integration doors. So I've said this before, we, if, if you're in Canada and you have your license, that's amazing. But there's only 52 cultivars approved right now. 
So what you're able to grow in Australia, or even, I mean, I would like to talk to you about Venezuela, no, but currently okay. where you're at, we're, we're not able to share genetics. We're what might grow better. That is something that I really want to see the barriers broken down. And to, to be able to, I mean, it's naive to say a cup of sugar, but at this point it kind of is being neighborly and saying, hey, my, my seeds grow better on this soil, yeah. but over in Australia, this genetic mean was better. So I don't, what I want to see change in the cannabis industry is that red tape and that being more accessible for farmers that want to convert their cash crops that want to get into the hemp industry, whether it be um, oil or fiber or grain or textiles, all of that I feel truly should be readily available to everyone in the world. And that, that truly is my end, my end goal. I agree with you. And I think that is a, a good goal that will enrich your vision and the power of the company to grow worldwide. Yes. I'm asking it, to you. It take us a little bit of time. We know this, but I feel, I feel in the last five years that we've made significant strides, not just in agriculture, but in overall education and people, company. I mean, we, we look at um, Calvin Klein or Levi's or Lego. I talk about Lego a lot. And if you look at any of my other interviews, Lego is bioplastic. We know that hemp is um, more sustainable and even more, um, what's the word that I'm looking, more viable mm -hmm. than the typical petroleum-based plastic, right? Lego is a multi-million dollar um, conglomerate. By 2025, they have put out press releases that they want all of their Lego pieces to be made by hemp bioplastic. Yes. So I've said it before and I will say it again, and it's with anything that is um, a push and a take and a consumer base, because all of it is consumer based. We needed that shift. We needed people to wake up and start realizing that it was, like I said, more sustainable, more cost effective, better for the planet. And everybody has stepped on a piece of Lego. I would feel less angry stepping on a piece of Lego if it was made out of hemp. <laughs> Could you like to take this opportunity to add um, some more value to the audience? Uh, any message that you would like to send out? I Like I said, and exactly to my point, it's a consumer shift. So be aware of your carbon footprint. Be aware of what you're putting into the planet versus what it can give you back. And I'm, trust me, I'm guilty. I'm not perfect. But the more that we become conscious of that and the more that we start to shift that, the more that, you know, Coven Klein, Lego, giant conglomerates are going to look at that and shift it. And I think that that will add to the infrastructure because even with import export, um, even within Canada itself, we're, we're having a big leg and I, I think once everybody starts paying more attention to that, then we will have more of a push and we will be able, be able rather to not scare farmers because how do, a farmer that has been doing this for you know, their whole life and that's the way that it goes and now it's shifting, but there's no end game. It's, it's extremely daunting. So I think we, we need to pay attention to that and work together continuously. I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. Danica, it has been a great pleasure having you with us. Your projects are very promising. Uh, I, if you don't mind, I suggest you. Uh, there is a company in California. I don't remember the name of it. They have been working with weddings, cannabis wedding for some time. They may be a good, a good hint to follow their no other examples because I see that you already have pretty much the idea already structured, but uh, their their journey, you know, they are based in Los Angeles or or Las Vegas. I don't remember, but that's what they do, and they have been quite successful. And I wish. 
I'm so, I'm so sorry to interrupt you because that was the other thing that I wanted to touch on. And I love that you said Los Angeles. What I didn't touch on as much as I would have liked is hempcrete. So when we're talking about these projects and we're talking about that, and when you mentioned Los Angeles, we know that there are rapid forest fires in California. We know even in Australia, especially, yes. we know that, and that, and I know that that is where you and I connected on the hempcrete. What I just, and so even if um, you don't want to build a project, I think that it's really important to know the benefits of that going forward of sustainability. Back to my point, there was an article, and when we go offline, I will send it to you, an article about, um, I always was concerned about that. When you do phytoremediation, so when the hemp plant soaks up any toxicity and takes it in, the burning question is, well, what do we do with the hemp plant? Where does it go? So um, Italy, a, a philosopher, sorry, a scientist in Italy just put out an article that is being proven to be able to use those plants that you soak up to do phytoremediation and then use them in them for hempcrete and it affects the material in no way. Well, uh, that is a plan. It's, that is a plan. Yeah. Uh, for... I'm sorry, I have to get that one in there. <laughs> For many companies on Earth, as we speak, uh, their main focus is extracting the CBD or any other mm -hmm. cannabinoids from the plants, and the biomass itself doesn't have any value for them. But the truth of the matter that from the engineering, from the engineering and industry perspective, the medicinal part is just a drop of water in the ocean, and the actual ocean is the industrial hemp and i i appreciate your passion so much once again thank you for giving me this opportunity and letting me speak my little heart out about hemp and that's why we connected over over the monkeys in nepal and <laughs> i'm sharing your big heart Anika. come on <laughs> oh, um, it, it is honestly my pleasure to chat with you i could speak to you all day we know this oh, i know i know that it, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And once again, if there's any follow-up, especially if you have any colleagues in Canada or North America that I, I can help with, I, it would be my absolute pleasure. And you know that I'm definitely going to visit you in Australia. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Maybe we start building the first the world is going to open. Exactly. The world is going to open back up and we joke about visiting and all that, but right now I think you asked what I want everybody to take away or think about. We we are not able to um, socialize together and I respect that. What we can do is focus on our own gardens exactly. and really keep in mind what, what we're putting into our soil and what we're doing to move forward and just keep growing. Uh, maybe we will build this house this year. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, you know I'm on that team. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Thank you, Danica. Oh Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Ciao. Absolutely. Thank Ciao. you.